Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Q list widget. Now this video is part three of the daily task planner series. This is a series, it's a four part video series where I teach you how to create this daily task planner, this small, simple application using PyQt5. All right, now in part three, we're going to look at the QList widget. In previous parts, we first talked about setting up PyQt5, setting up the project, setting up the interface, talking a bit about the basics and the basic principles of PyQt5. In part two, we talked about the calendar widget, which is this guy right here. We talked about extracting the date from this widget and performing different actions whenever the date selected is changed. Now in this part, we're going to talk about the list and we're going to see how we're going to create a checklist out of this list widget. First of all, what is a list widget? A list widget is one type of uh, queue widget. So it's one of the many queue widgets provided to us by PyQt5. As you can see from the name, it actually provides us with a list of things. It's very similar to a list view. Now, what is the difference between a list widget and a list view? So a list widget is a type of list view where we're actually dealing with items. Now, what are items? If I double click on the list widget here in designer, I can edit the items of this list. So how do I do that? I can go here and I can go to new item and then I can create this task one. And then I can create a second task. So here, task two, and I can press okay. So now I've added two items to this list widget. So these are called Q list widget items. That's a mouthful, but you'll get used to it. All right, so now what I can do is I can press Control R. So Control R on Windows actually enables me to preview my application. So this is what it would look like upon executing. Of course, this is without all the functionality that we later add in by writing some code. As you can see, this is a list widget. So it's a list of Q list widget items. So I can press task one, press task two, and then different things could happen according to that. Now, the next step we want is we actually want to convert this to be to look like a checklist. So we want some checkboxes here, as I showed you at the start of video number one. So we want this to be a checklist. All right, how are we going to do this? So the first thing we're going to do is actually look at how we're going to refer to this through the code, see how we can add the checklist part and make some small modifications. All right. So the first step actually is we added these guys manually. Now you can add them manually via the PyQt, um, the Qt designer, right? So if I run this now, so let's say I go back to my project in PyCharm. So this is where my project is. Before we only implemented the fact the calendar date changed um, as a function. So now I can run this and I can see that task one and task two were added. So what I'm trying to highlight here is if you add something manually via the Qt designer, if you add your list widget items there, you will be able to see them when you run the application. All right. So that's one way for you to do things. Maybe you choose to do things if you know for a fact that your items will never change. Let's say you will always have the same options in this list. Maybe you choose to do it via the designer. That's fine. That's totally up to you. However, it's probably better to do it with the code in case you want to change some values and you don't want to go back to the UI. So let's see how we're going to do that. Okay, so now I'm going to close this and go back to the code. Now, as you can see before, we referred to the calendar widget by going self.calendar widget. Where did I get this again? I can go back to designer and I can check here. So this guy, and I can see the object name is list widget. Now I can change this to be anything that I want. Now I'm going to keep it to be list, list widget just so that we know to refer to it through the code. Or I can actually even do this. So I'm just going to call it tasks. Or maybe for a better description, I'm going to say tasks list widget. All right. Now that I have the name, I know how to refer to it through the code. So if I say self.tasks list widget, now I know that I have this variable inside my window class, which is representative of this list widget in my UI. All right, so now I know how to refer to it. Okay, so what do I want to do next? The next thing I want to do is I want to dynamically add the items to the UI from the code. So I don't want to add them manually. So I'm going to go back to designer and I'm going to delete these guys. So I'm just going to press this and delete them. So now we have a totally blank one all over again. And actually I'm going to comment this out and I'm going to run it just so that I can show you that 
they're gone. Okay, so we have a blank canvas to work with. All right. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a constant. So I'm just going to call this tasks and it's going to be a list of tasks. Now this is going to be purely arbitrary. So I'm just going to say write email. All right, my bad. And so write email, um, finish feature, assuming you're working on some type, some type of feature, uh, watch tutorial. So those are like three tasks, very generic. This is just for the sake of example. So I have these tasks. Now what I want to do is I want to add them dynamically through the code. So I'm going to create a function here and I'm going to call this update list widget or maybe even more descriptive update task list. All right. And what this function is going to do is it's going to iterate through the tasks. So for task in tasks, what am I going to do? I want to add them to the list widget. Sounds good? Great. Now that I have this, what I'm going to do is the following. So I'm going to say item will be equal to a Q list widget item. And here I need to pass a string. So where am I going to get these strings? I'm going to get these strings from here, from the task. So this will be task. Now that I've passed the string here, I will have created a Q list widget item using this task. If I hover over this, I can just import it. So as you can see, it gets imported from pyqt5.qt widgets. The source code, by the way, will be available in the description down below. All right. Now that I have created the item, what I want to do is I want to add this item to the list widget. So I just do the following. I say this guy right here. So what we defined as so we said this would enable us to talk to this list widget and i'm just going to say dot add item and i'm going to add item so the q list widget item that i created again this takes a string it will return a q list widget item and this q list widget item will be passed here to add an item to the list widget the final thing I have to do is that I want to call this function because right now we defined it, but we didn't call it anywhere. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to simply call it right here. So self .update task list. This way I know that I'm calling it as soon as I initialize my object. So in the constructor itself. Now I will run this again and you will see that write email, finish feature and watch tutorial have been added to the list widget itself. Now I know it's not a checklist, not yet. But for now, we just added everything to the list widget. All right, what's the next thing that we want to do? The next thing we want to do is we want to convert this to a checklist, right? We said that we want this to be a checklist. So we want to give the user the ability to check and uncheck their tasks. How do I do this? So I'll go back here and I'll go back to item itself. So this is a queue list widget item. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set flags. So flags are like properties. You could think of them like that. So this is properties for this queue list widget item. I'm going to set the flags to be the following. I will get item dot flags. So by doing so, I'm extracting the previously present flag. So obviously it has some flags that were set by default. I'm getting those because it, I don't want to replace them. I just want to add to them and I will use this little line in the middle so that now I'm adding another flag and I will say I want to get Qt core dot Qt dot item is checkable. Actually one second so this is item is user checkable. So by doing this I'm saying I want the item to have a checkbox. Now I can just import this. So this import this one. So Qt console .qt import Qt core. Now that I have this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the, uh, the box to be not checked. So I want it to be unchecked when I start my application. So I will say item dot set check state, and I'm going to give it Qt core dot Qt dot unchecked. Perfect. Now I'm going to run it. And as you can see, now we have these checkboxes. I can check or uncheck them. 
depending on what I like. And this is the checkbox that we created. All right, so let's just recap for a bit. We added this here for the sake of example. We said that in part four of the series, there will be a database and we will be persisting our tasks in this database. Then when we are adding them to this list widget, we will be getting them from the database itself and not from this sample tasks thing that you can see right here. Okay, so we'll be getting them from the database and then we'll be leaving them checked or unchecked depending on whether the user has completed this task before. Now this is talk for part four of this series. Let's not worry too much about it for now. The goal of this video is to get acquainted with the QList widget, the QList widget items, and look a bit on, um, and look a bit at how we can add this checkbox. One more thing I can do, and now this is totally not necessary, but I'm going to do it just so that we can match the aesthetic of the interface is I can go here and I can change the style sheet and I can change the font size to be 12, just so that I have a slightly larger font size. Okay, now I'm going to save this. And yeah, that's really it for this video. We worked with the list widget, we learned about the QList widget item, and we learned how to create these checkboxes. Tune in to the fourth and final part of this series, where we will actually look at adding a database integration and see how we're going to save our tasks in a database. All right, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video and bye-bye.